that reminds me of animals. Yeah, my, my, my kids are like, I have two kids and they're really interested in animals now, but I always tell them things that aren't true, just for fun. Like they were, they were taught, they wanted um, a hamster or a gerbil. And I told them that if you pick up a hamster by the back legs, their eyes fall out. And this, this blew my son's mind. She's just like, wow. And he was thinking about it all day, like, you know? And then they saw a picture of a koala bear. And I don't know why, I'm just like, you know, the thing about koala bears, they're very sensitive. And if you scream at them, they'll curl up and die. And this upset my daughter, Emily. And so now I just find myself lying to them all the time. And I feel bad, like the other day, this is the worst one I told, because they, they were telling me about their school and how hard they're working. And I said, you know, well, if you work really hard here and you go to school, you go to university, uh, when you finish, there'll be a high paying job waiting for you. <laughs> so I gotta stop lying to them. So, uh, before we bring up the next person, uh, I thought I'm going to use the opportunity to tell a story of my own, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of different stories, short stories, short, short stories, uh, but I want to know what you're in the mood for. You want something funny, yeah. or you want something scary, since it's Halloween? Scary. Let's see. Oh, huh. so raise your hand if you want something scary. Scary. And when I say scary, I think I mean it. Not like, ha, 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 you know. Uh, or you want something funny? Let's play funny. All right. Let's see. Watch. Oh, shoot. Okay. I pull this up here. Okay. Uh, all right. See if I can do this. I've never, this is a, a newer story uh, that I wrote, not published, and I've never read it out loud. And it's called uh, Wisdom. And I just lost the page. Come on. All right. Um, here we go. No wisdom is called. So bear with me here if I can do this. All right. My dentist said that there was a complication with my wisdom teeth extraction, which is why he had to amputate my legs. He said that teeth are a lot like icebergs. There was a lot more you didn't see beneath the surface. You saw Titanic, my dentist said, so, so you know. He told me about one tooth he pulled that was so long it was connected to a man's heart. It was like pulling off the labels on the couch that clearly said not to remove and you end up taking off more than you intended, like this man's, God rest his soul, heart. It shamed me to know that I broke a man's heart, said my dentist. I'll never forgive myself for that. After a few moments of staring out the window, my dentist said it was sad that there wasn't some kind of technology that allowed medical experts to see inside of a patient's body. My mouth was full of cotton and gauze. Like an x-ray, I mumbled. <laughs> I get that you're frustrated, said my dentist, but there's no need for that kind of language. You should know better. My dentist explained my dentist explained how he had turned, uh, he had burned my legs immediately so that there would be no fear that they'd regenerate and I'd have to deal with the threat of two evil duplicates trying to destroy my life. I won't make that kind of amateur mistake again, said my dentist, and then he laughed nervously. He didn't charge me for the wheelchair. He brought the wheelchair in bulk because this kind of thing had been happening more and more recently. I don't want to be that guy, said the dentist, but I think it might have something to do with climate change. I remember hearing something about climate change on the news, so maybe there was something to it. I felt an overwhelming sadness when it hit me that I wouldn't be able to play the piano again. Depending on the blog you read, I was the fourth or fifth best feet playing pianist in South Florida. I pressed down on the cotton in my mouth and my eyes filled up with tears. Hey, don't be that way, said my dentist. Lots of people go to, go to lead no, completely normal lives without their wisdom teeth. 
I know. I'm just being silly, I mumbled. What is this, the 1960s? I warned you already about the racial slurs. I simply don't tolerate that here in my office. I'm sorry, I garbled. There you go again. I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. One of my ex-wives was Jewish or something weird like that. My dentist helped, <clears throat> my dent, uh, my dentist, uh, helped me into my wheelchair. It was too small. I think this is meant for kids, I said. Had I known you were so full of hate, I never would have brought you out of that coma. My assistant will escort you out now. His assistant, a tall woman with black hair, pushed me out of the room into the waiting area. Don't mind him, she said. He's having a bad day because he found out that everything he loves is illegal. That's the problem for men like him, who love too much. She appeared distracted as she filled out the paperwork. My insurance covered the dental work, but not the amputation, the prostate exam, the hearing test, and the wheelchair. I put the difference on two of my credit cards. When we were done, the assistant pushed me through the empty waiting room to the front door. I told him to stop pulling, she said, but once he gets going, there's just no stopping him. He just cares too much. I nodded, I could relate. I'm the same way with my cuticles. He'll give your wisdom the Viking funeral they deserve, I promise, she said. She said this as she pushed me through the doorway outside. She closed the door behind me and locked it immediately. There were three steps down and no ramp. I knocked on the door for help, but there was no answer. I realized that this was my life now. I must learn to deal with these kinds of obstacles on my own. I carefully made the first step, but quickly lost control and fell to the pavement below. The wheelchair rolled into the parking lot without me. <clears throat> that was quite a fall, someone said. I looked up. A naked man was standing over me. With the sun hiding behind him, it took me a few seconds to realize that he was, well, me. He reached his hand out. And when I went to take it, he slapped my hand away. Instead, he knelt down and took my wallet and car keys from my jacket pocket. What are you doing, he says. Wow, are we racist? I don't remember that. He started to walk away when another naked version of me hit him from behind. The second me tr tried to take his wallet, and they began wrestling one another. In one direction, my wheelchair was moving off into the distance toward the highway, and in the other direction were two naked copies of me fighting in the hot parking lot. After about five minutes, they stopped, both out of, out of breath. They agreed to a truce, an alliance against the common enemy, before they're turning their heads towards me. They took my clothes, everything, before driving away in my car. The police showed up not long after that, as the two large black police officers approached, I decided it would be best not to say anything. But the thing about being naked in public is that it's infinitely more creepy for those watching you if you remain silent. This might explain why people who do this sort of thing on occasion are usually drunk and or singing or acting out a scene from their favorite play. They wrapped me in a blanket and put me in the back of their police car. Hell of a day, the police officer said, who offered me some water. The other officer told me that it was going to be okay. He said that everybody has a bad day, no worries. He put his hand on my shoulder and he squeezed lightly. I just want to take you home, he said. Just tell me where you live, okay? Tears wandered down my face. I remember being a little and the faces of my mother and father were like twin suns orbiting, orbiting my every move. I remember the cool evenings with my father holding me on the couch, keeping me warm within the glow of the television. Everyone was a giant, and everyone was wise. There was no way I could fall back then. And despite everything that had happened in the last few hours, I felt this again in the back of the police car with this wonderful man's hand on my shoulder. It was as if this officer was somehow renewing the promise of my parents had kindly established, a promise that I had forgotten. Thank you, I said. Thank you so much, I mumbled. I was wiping my eyes, so I missed the second when their smiles disappeared. It was quick after that. The, the coolness of the car was replaced by the heat outside. The comfort of the back seat became the hot, grainy asphalt. The hand on my shoulder transformed into baton, seemingly touching every part of my body. I kept begging for them to stop beating me, but, they, but that only made things worse. When the mace assaulted my eyes, 
inv invaded my nostrils and throat like boiling seawater. I wondered about the man I was this morning, the man who woke up in his bed, who stood in the bathroom on his own two legs, who looked in the mirror and smiled and said, I should get my teeth whitened today. So, <clears throat> no wisdom. All right, speaking of no wisdom, anyone, I'll work on the ending. Anyone want to come up to the challenge? Anyone, or anyone want to come back? Uh, anyone want to take challenge? Hagen? Hagen. Uh, I don't want you to single out anybody. I'm going to do the look around. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to take challenge. I have way too many questions. Way too many questions here. Just throw it into the group. I should. Just read it. Would you rather the general public think you are a horrible person, but your family be very proud of you, or your family think you're a horrible person, but the general public be very proud of you? Mm. So basically, your family thinks you're horrible, or the public thinks you're horrible. Would you rather? Hmm. That's tough. No one? No one to do it? Lots of questions. Good one. You, sir, you look like a man who has a story to tell. Not, the, not behind you, right there. Yeah, you, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 no? Wake him up. Try. I'm right, thanks. Yeah, right? Anybody? Nobody wants to do it? All right, okay. Monica, you want to tell your shower story? I was there already, I think. You're done? You're done? Everybody? Everybody done? Anybody? Simon, you have another story in your back pocket? <laughs> <laughs> we need somebody come up here with a better voice than me. <laughs> <laughs>